Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Indeed, my great pleasure um, to be back here after certain years to worship with you all of you, and especially I thank uh, the pastor. Um, I know he is ministering um, in Ireland. Um, I bring greetings to him and his family and all the church leadership. Um, thank you for this opportunity, and especially I wanted to um, acknowledge uh, the presence of our dear brothers, families here, uh, brother Sergeant and family, and um, my dear Finichan and family. It's been a long time we are worshiping together. I acknowledge and also bring greetings to all of you in the matchless name of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I know uh, we have very few minutes uh, for today's message. And I've been praying um, what should be the <clears throat> message today. And as we have been meditating from the word yesterday and day before yesterday, one theme which is coming on and on is about um, our involvement in the kingdom of God. On Friday, we heard that we have to respond to the word of God positively. It is not about hearing the word, but to respond. Obedience, that's, that's where God is going to please. And that is where we are going to see the miracles. And yesterday we heard about um, how important it is to have that personal call, the conviction of come. Uh, Jesus called Peter, come in the midst of the storm. Praise God. And that is very important because when we realize, when we have that conviction in our life, we will advance in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Today, I just wanted to bring um, uh, to you all a very important theme from the book of Acts. Um, we are part of an unstoppable church. Praise God. That is the theme I just wanted to present um, today morning. We are part of an unstoppable church. That is the reason why today morning we heard a lot of testimonies from the mission field. Right, if you look at the history of the church, the church has been advancing. I'm not talking about the organization, I'm talking about the body of Christ. Nothing could stop the church. Nothing could stop the church. Because it has an unstoppable nature. Hallelujah. I just wanted to look at that nature from the book of, Apost uh, from the book of Acts. And then I wanted to point out a couple of reasons why it is unstoppable. If you go through the book of Acts, every place, every time when they go through a time of suffering, a tribulation, the next immediate statement is not that the church has halted, the church became very stagnant. No, the next immediate statement is that church was progressing. Praise the Lord. Naturally, it should happen that oh, they were going through a severe persecution. Peter and uh, John were in prison and church became very silent. No, the next immediate verse is church became more powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Right, if you come to Acts chapter 4, right, when Peter and John were released, they came home and then they were praying together with one accord, with united heart. And if you look at that prayer, it was not a prayer of Lord, a timidity, it was a prayer of boldness. Right? Normally the prayer could have been like, Lord, please help us so that next few months there should not be any persecution so that we cannot be at peace and we can gather together. No, 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 no. They were praying that, Lord, from tomorrow onwards, today, only Peter and John were part of the persecution. From tomorrow onwards, we all are ready to be part of the persecution. Give us the boldness to move forward. Why? Because we are part of an unstoppable church. Unstoppable church. Hallelujah. Right, I, I just wanted to bring some of the verses. Acts chapter 5 verse 25. Then someone came and said, Look, the man you put in jail are standing in the temple. Teaching the people. Are you not seeing a kind of supernatural behavior here? Right, the people whom you have put in jail, what they are doing right now? They are teaching they are teaching. Now, come 
to chapter 6 verse 7. The soul, the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. And a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Intermittently they were going through persecution. But immediately after that we can see the church is exponentially growing. And they had a very important formula. Everybody, every house, every day. That was their formula. Let me repeat that. Everybody, every day, every house. It was not some people, when we are having convenience and few areas. No, 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 no. It was like everybody in the church, every day, in every place. Look at the coverage. Right? Not even one person in the church was inactive. And that was the equation by which the church was being driven because it is an unstoppable church. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that we are also part of that unstoppable church and we need to demonstrate that nature in our day to day behavior and we need to understand that we are placed in this city, we are placed in this generation for a purpose to be part of this unstoppable church. We should not be stagnant, we should move forward. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop the church. Praise the Lord. Come with me to chapter number 8. Verse number 4. Those who had been scattered by persecution because the previous chapter, what happened? Stephen was stoned to death. Right? And who was witnessing that? Saul was witnessing. And I strongly believe that before the Damascus episode, he already had an encounter with God by seeing the death of Stephen. He would have thought, man, the people whom I am persecuting is going to have a good time. What is the point of me persecuting these people? Because this guy, Stephen, when he is being stoned, what he is doing? He is looking at heaven and smiling. Praise the Lord. Have you, can you just imagine that it's happening when a, when a person is being stoned in severe pain from a human standpoint? What he's doing? He's looking at heaven. He's seeing a vision. He's rejoicing. Then Saul would have thought, what, I am, what in the world I'm doing? Did you understand this? And the next verse is, the people who had been scattered, what they were doing? Preached wherever they went. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. The people who are scattered, what could be their mental situation? What could be their mental situation? Right? But what they were doing? They were preaching. Amen. Because they understood that we are a part of an unstoppable church. Praise the Lord. Because the early church, the apostles, demonstrated that the unstoppable nature of the church, my dear brothers and sisters, we are here today. If Paul would have told no to that Macedonian vision, what would have happened to the evangelism in the continent of Europe? Have you ever thought about that? The unstoppable nature of the church was the driving force. Praise God. Chapter number 1, chapter number 9, verse 31. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. And in that time also, what they were doing Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Huh. When there was a time of peace, so they would have interpreted like this: "Oh, this is a time of peace. Let us enjoy time together." No, 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 no. That time also is for the expansion of the kingdom because we are part of an unstoppable church. 
Hallelujah. I'm just quickly referring some words because you all know this. Acts chapter 12 verse 17. After the release of Peter from the prison. Right? As soon as he reached home. The Mark's house. Verse number 17. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet. And described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Right? The next verse. Tell James and other brothers and sisters about this. Please inform them. And then what did he do? He left for another place. Peter, are you serious? Just now, just now, you have been released from the prison. Right? Miraculously. In this situation, the church would have told, look, let us spend time together and then let us arrange some meetings so that Peter can share the testimony. No, 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 no. Peter told, no, there is no time for all those things. You just tell them that God has delivered. It is a, it is a normal behavior of the church. Let me move on. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is no time for me to experience this, sorry, sharing this experience and bringing glory to me. No, 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 no. God has delivered me. You tell James and brothers, let me move on to the other place because I am a part of unstoppable church. Oh, praise the Lord. Remember, remember, during the course of time, we, we, we made church as an organization, but now church is not a stagnant organization. Church is a moving, moving part. Hallelujah. Church is the unstoppable living part of the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It has life. It has life. Hallelujah. Chapter number 12, verse 24. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. When we read this verse, we may think that it was automatically doing, happening. Right? The message has been played. No, 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 no. People were part of this. It was not automatically the word was spreading. I was thinking that if God don't need any of our involvement... Then what would have happened to the missions? But Jesus is saying, the church will not just let that grow. I want you to be part of that. People were involved. People were involved. As I told, every day, everybody, every place. That was the equation of this church. And that should be the equation of our church as well. Let me come to the, the last verse and then let me bring why this church is unstoppable. Chapter number 14, verse 20. When I read this verse, I was not able to imagine how this would have happened. In Lystra, Paul had to go through a severe persecution. Right? Right? He became almost dead. Verse number 20. The disciples started praying. But after the disciples had gathered around him. Because he's almost dead. Because he was stoned and he was dragged. Imagine the situation of Paul. When after the disciples had gathered around him. What happened? He got up and went back into the city. There was a miracle happening there. Paul got up. The next verse. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. The next day, the next day. How can that happen? The next day, after going through severe persecution. He was almost dead. If I would have been there, at least I would have taken two weeks of rest. Right? 
There is nothing wrong. Church would have told Paul, take some rest. Take it slow. Paul, no, 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 no. The next day, the next day, he was restless. He was driven by the unstoppable nature of the church. The next day, he went to Derby. My dear brothers and sisters, we are not part of a dead church. We are part of an unstoppable church. Are we demonstrating that in our day-to-day behavior? Then you may ask, Peter, John, and Barnabas, and Paul, all were preachers and teachers. I am not. But look at the book of Acts. Simon the Tanner, who didn't preach a single preaching, had a role in this kingdom. You know why? He allowed Peter to stay in his house for a long time. When I read that verse, I had a lot of respect for this man. And eventually what happened? This house became a strategic place of kingdom advancement. In his house, Peter saw the vision. In his house, the people from the Cornelius P, the, 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 the uh, home came and talked. They stayed there. Eventually, it became Peter's house. A simple act of obedience from this insignificant man made him to be part of an unstoppable church. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a teacher. Just open your home for the advancement of the kingdom. That is more than enough. Mary, the mother of Mark, had a role. Every time meeting happens in her home. Every time her her meeting, her house is open. Tabitha had a role. Justice who lost the selection for the next apostle. Right? He also had a role next day for the revival meeting who also was there. He was also there. He could have told, oh no, yesterday in the selection I lost. No, he understood the will of God. Let Matthias be that man. But I am part of the unstoppable church. I have a role. I have a role. We all have a role in this unstoppable church. Are you ready to recognize that role today? Praise the Lord. Let me come to my conclusion. Why this church is unstoppable? Three reasons I just wanted to bring. Number one, by design it is unstoppable. Why do I say so? Jesus told, because of the lack of time, let me move forward. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Now I say to you that you are Peter. But upon this rock... I will build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. See the way the master, the owner of the church has designed this. Praise the Lord. We are meant to be in the spiritual warfare. We are meant to be in the warfare. But let me assure you, because of the design of the church, nobody can overtake this because it is unstoppable by design. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is saying, this is not designed for a short period of time. By design itself, it can go miles. It can go miles. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, we are part of an unstoppable church because our own master has designed this church. I will build my church. Nobody else can build my church. Everybody can claim that they are part of the organization leaders, but building the church, the ownership of the church, belongs to my master. When Peter preached, 3,000 people got saved. But the Holy Spirit has written like this. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. 
and the Lord added to the church. Come on. Peter only preached. Right? Peter don't have any role? No. Peter, you just preach. I still own the church. Lord added people to the church. Who added? Lord. Why it is unstoppable? By design, it is unstoppable. Hallelujah. Every day when we get up in the morning, first thing we need to do, we need to recognize, Lord, I am a part of an unstoppable church. Hallelujah. Right, Lord of missionaries prayed like this. One of the missionaries' prayer was, Lord, she became a missionary later in Egypt. She told like this every day she used to pray, Lord, today's agenda is with you. And if you want me to do anything for a kingdom, let me know I am available for you today. Oh, what a great prayer. I don't mind changing my schedule. I don't mind changing my routine things which I am planned to do today. If at all anything I need to do for a kingdom today, Lord, I know I am a part of an unstoppable church. Please let me know I am available for you. Hallelujah. That is demonstrating the nature of unstoppable nature of the church. Hallelujah. But very sadly we are indulged in our own agenda. We don't have time for the kingdom agenda. Let me tell you, you have a purpose in this generation. You have a purpose in the generation. It is not by accident you are here. It is not by accident you are born in that family. It is not by accident you are placed in this church. It is not by accident you are studying in that college. It is not by accident you are working in that hospital. It is part of kingdom agenda. It is part of the strategic placement of God because you are part of an unstoppable church. Why it is unstoppable? Number two, by the power invested in us, it is unstoppable. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Can somebody read that verse for me? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I will, I will conclude in five more minutes, Pastor. Yes. 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 Did you see the progression there? The power which is invested in you. Right? It will make you to move on. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The power, the power, the power. I remember when I came to U.S., me and my friend went for a drive. And first time we were driving a rental car. Then we understood after driving some miles, this car is not meant for a long distance. We came back and told this rental company, man, why did you do this? <laughs> that, that, that agent was telling, I don't know who gave this car to you. This was only meant to drive 50 miles or 60 miles. Did you understand? But the power, the power invested in our life, it will take you miles and miles and miles. Amen. Hallelujah. Millions of martyrs. They spared their life. They, spe they, they, they died for Christ. Because they were able to acknowledge, acknowledge the power. Because they understood that. They are part of an unstoppable church. By design. Because it is designed by our Lord. By power. Because it is the Holy Spirit. The primary purpose of the infilling, the power of the Holy Spirit is to advance the kingdom of God. Is to advance the kingdom of God. 
right? Acts chapter 2, when they were all filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the next immediate thing what we are seeing is that they started advancing the kingdom of God. They became bold. They became courageous. Let me come to my final. Why this church is unstoppable? By design, by power. And finally, by the purpose. Why do I say so? Jesus told his disciples, Acts, sorry, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. I was thinking this equation should change one day. No, because if you take a slice of generation we are part of, this equation will be always true because every time the generation which represents the harvest move on, the generation which represents the labors are also moving on. The new generation is coming. That is why it is very important for us to understand in this generation, nobody can share the gospel. Praise the Lord. I cannot share the gospel after 50 years. I cannot. I would not have shared the gospel 50 years back, right? There is a designated generation to be part of this unstoppable church. My dear young people, in your college, in your school, nobody else can share the gospel. The purpose, the purpose. Jesus told you are the light of the world. Which world? Your assigned world. You have a world, hallelujah. In that world, you should be the light. Praise God. The purpose is so huge. The harvest is still plenty. But the labors are few. That will make this church unstoppable because we have miles to go to accomplish the final commission of our master. I thank God for the church, this church, your involvement in missions, global mission, local mission. I thank God for that because it is the nature of the church. We are part of an unstoppable church. Hallelujah. Let me read one more verse and I will close here. Romans chapter 15, 23. Paul is logically concluding one statement here by saying, but now, but now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions. Ha. Who is telling? Paul is telling. Now I don't have any place to go. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. When God was talking to Joshua towards his end of his life, right? God is telling Joshua, you are very old. I'm really concerned. Joshua is asking, why God? You are about to die. But there is more land to be captured. Who will do that? I was thinking, God, instead of telling this as a concern, why didn't you extend Joshua's life for another 20 years? The life giver is telling Joshua, oh, you are going to die. But Joshua understood it is the responsibility of the next generation. Amen. Hallelujah. God cannot extend the life of Joshua forever. Hallelujah. After Joshua, there should be somebody. My dear brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility in this generation. Hallelujah. We need to capture more land because we are part of an unstoppable church. Amen. These days, acknowledge your role in this church and demonstrate that power and believe in your purpose because the harvest is plenty the labors are few may God bless you with these words once again I just wanted to extend my thanks to the church please continue to pray for us may God bless you